matter theory is, a pseudoscientific concept that asserts that, the Earth is flat rather than spherical. The flat Earth believers still exist, in the modern world, and their number is increasing due to, massive campaigns on social media. Even people familiar with science are also joining the flat earthers. A large number of flat earth believers do not know science, or they don't believe in science. In this video, we are discussing, several points to prove that, the flat earth model is wrong. We will use flat earthers language, to debunk their model without briefly discussing the science. First, let's know what is, the flat earth model. According to the flat earth theory, the earth is not spherical, but disc shaped. Earth is stationary, it neither rotates, nor revolves around the sun. Earth is the center of the universe. The sun, moon, and stars are orbiting earth. The earth is centered, at the north pole, and surrounded by a wall of ice, Antarctica. Earth is intact, surrounded by a dome, from which nothing can go in, or out. Some flat earthers also believe that, there are continents beyond Antarctica that governments keep hiding, to capture their resources. It is one of the main reasons, why people believe in the flat earth today, because most people don't trust governments. The flat earth map they use to support their theory is just, a projection of the globe map onto a flat surface. This map is not necessarily wrong, but it distorts the size of Antarctica. Let's debunk the flat earth theory with some common points, without using complex scientific explanations. According to the flat earth model, the sun appears, moving in a circle, above the earth's surface. It means the sun's path is always parallel, to the earth's surface. If it was true, we would see the sky, or sky glow, even at night, since the sun emits light, in every direction. The earth's surface, limits the sunlight to a point, but what about the dome, over the earth? According to the flat earth model, there is no obstacle, between the earth's dome, and the earth's surface, it means that the sun is always, visible to the dome. So why such intense sunlight doesn't reach the other parts of the dome at night? What blocks the sunlight from illuminating the dome at night? The flat earthers might say that the dome is too big and the sunlight is not bright enough to see at night. Even so, there would be some effect of sunlight at night. Forget the complex star constellations. The star trails can also prove that the earth is not flat. Star trails can be seen in long exposure photographs of the night sky. The star trails appear to form circles in both the northern and the southern hemisphere. But the direction of rotation of the circles are different. In the northern hemisphere, the stars appear to rotate counterclockwise, while in the southern hemisphere, the stars appear to rotate clockwise. At the equator, the star trails appear as arcs rather than circles. Such star trails can only be explained by the globe model. Flat Earthers don't believe in planets. According to them, there is no such thing as planets, they're just stars. If planets were also stars, they would have the same apparent movement across the sky as stars. But in reality, planets move differently than stars do. Stars appear to have fixed positions in the night sky relative to one another. Planets, on the other hand, exhibit wandering motion relative to the background stars. The flat earth model is based on assumptions. They have no common narrative or standard data. They can't explain the nature of the sun and moon and their movement relative to each other. Some of them believe that the moon emits light. If it was true, there would be no moon phases at all. And we would sometimes see the full moon and the sun together in the sky. While some flat earthers believe that the moon doesn't emit light and instead receives light from the sun. It makes some sense, but it is very difficult to explain the moon phases in a flat earth model. If the sun and the moon were moving at the same speed and in the same direction around the earth, the moon would only have one phase and would be visible every night with the same appearance. It contradicts what we observe in reality. Let's consider the second scenario where the moon and sun move around the earth at different speeds. To display the moon phases correctly, as seen from Earth, we would need to adjust the direction of the moon. By changing the moon's direction, it would rise from the west and set in the east. If we keep the moon's direction same, its phases wouldn't match with the real moon phases. 
In both cases, we wouldn't be able to see the full moon from the Earth's surface. If the Sun and Moon are local, and their sizes are nearly the same, then in the case of a solar eclipse, the Moon would simultaneously block all the sunlight to the world. It would cause a solar eclipse everywhere at the same time. While in the Flat Earth model, the lunar eclipse doesn't exist. Flat Earthers believe that the Sun and Moon are local and move in a circle above the Earth. If the Sun and Moon are moving like this, it would make sense that their light couldn't reach the land beyond the Antarctic. It means that the land beyond the Antarctic is in permanent darkness. If there is indeed land beyond Antarctica, the Creator should not have confined the Sun and Moon to the known land. Flat Earthers claim that beyond Antarctica lies more than just continents. Some of them claim that there are entire worlds out there with their own suns and moons. If that was the case, then how someone can go beyond the Antarctic to seize resources by crossing the barrier of dome? Flat Earth believers often say that no one can go to space due to the barrier of dome. Flat Earthers believe that the sun and moon are always present in the sky. They agree to the point that the setting and rising are illusions, but for this, they present a strange logic that the sun and moon start coming closer to us during rising and they recede during setting. If this was true, we would expect to see significant variations in their sizes as they move closer or further away. Because according to flat earthers, the sun and moon are local and have small sizes. Some flat earthers claim that the blue hue of the sky is the color of dome. However, if this was the case, we wouldn't see the sky's color shift during sunrise and sunset. Additionally, in the flat earth model, the sun is always positioned in front of the dome, which suggests that the sky should appear blue at night too. Tidal waves caused by the moon is a well-known fact. In the Flat Earth model, we find no trace of the measurement of the Sun and the Moon. It seems like they're both the same size and much smaller than Earth. The small moon of the Flat Earth can't produce tidal waves on such a large scale. In the Flat Earth model, the Sun is believed to be the same size as the Moon, which would suggest that they both produce the same tidal waves on Earth. In reality, the Sun also causes tidal waves on Earth, but the influence of the tidal waves caused by the Moon is greater than that of the Sun. This is a strong indication that the Sun is much farther away from us than the Moon. If the Earth is covered by the dome, it's hard to say where meteoroids might come from. According to Flat Earthers, there are no other celestial bodies except the local Sun and Moon. They see all planets and stars as just tiny points of light. Flat Earthers claim that the Antarctic region is not a continent, but a massive continuous ice wall that surrounds the entire edge of the Flat Earth. An ice wall alone would not be sufficient to contain the vast quantities of water in Earth's oceans. Ocean waves that cause erosion would have worn away the Antarctic ice wall in such a long time. Water itself exerts an upward, buoyant force on ice submerged in it. This buoyant force keeps objects, including icebergs, and ice shelves afloat. Flat Earthers criticize the globe model that water and air always need a container. So how can water and air exist on the globe without a container? They suggest dome holds air, and the ice wall of the Antarctica supports ocean water. Interestingly, they do not believe in gravity. It is a common observation that everything on Earth is subject to its gravitational pull, regardless of whether it's solid, liquid or gas. The strength of this pull is directly related to an object's mass, meaning that the greater the mass, the stronger the pull. We can hardly find oxygen at high altitudes. It is because it's heavier than other gases in the air. So it tends to settle in the lower atmosphere. It's worth considering that just as gravity can prevent oxygen from reaching high altitudes without a container. It can also prevent other gases from escaping into space. However, if dome was a container, and there was no gravity, the composition of the air would be the same everywhere. 
breathing would be easier at high altitudes, and mountaineers wouldn't need to carry oxygen tanks. A massive body can't survive as a flat disk. As mass increases, the gravity becomes so strong that it collapses a massive disk into a spherical ball. But flat earthers don't believe in gravity. They should explain, why are the sun and moon spherical? If the sun and moon can be spherical, why not the earth? It is impossible for a massive celestial object to survive in a disk shape. For some flat earthers, gravity is a hoax. If they do believe in gravity, it can make it harder to prove that the earth is flat. There is much controversy about the gravity among the flat earthers. Some argue that objects fall because the earth is constantly accelerating upward. It doesn't quite fit with their theory that the earth is stationary. Flat earthers use a global map projection to explain seasons. The tropic lines are the same on their map as they are on globe map. These lines show the path of the sun on the map during different times of the year. In the Flat Earth model, the Tropic of Cancer looks much shorter than the Tropic of Capricorn. It means that during December, the Sun has to travel a greater distance as it moves over the Tropic of Capricorn. If we assume the speed of the Sun remains constant, it would take longer to cover the Tropic of Capricorn during December. As a result the Sun would rise later each day. If we increase the speed of the Sun, to cover its path over the Tropic of Capricorn, in 24 hours, the Sun would appear to move quickly across the sky in December. It is also difficult to explain why the diameter of the Sun's path becomes larger during December and smaller in June. The Flat Earth model simply can't explain the lava eruption. The idea that the Earth is completely solid from the outside to the inside just doesn't hold up when we consider the way that lava flows and erupts. According to the Flat Earth model, a lava eruption shouldn't be possible. It's been suggested that a massive lava eruption could even cause a hole in the thin disk-shaped Flat Earth. The Flat Earthers may consider the lava eruption as a hoax. If the Earth was completely solid, without any lava and tectonic plates, there would be no earthquakes. However, earthquakes do occur on the Earth. Flat Earthers may assume that earthquakes occur when a giant turtle or cow supporting the Earth causes some movement. From a solid and flat Earth perspective, earthquakes should not be limited to any particular area. In case of any seismic activity, it would likely be felt everywhere with the same intensity. If you look at the flight path of any airplane on a flat map, it will be in a curved shape. The curve increases as the flight distance increases. If the Earth was flat, the flight paths would be perfectly straight. Because a curve increases the distance. For example, the flight path from Washington DC, USA to Tokyo Japan, which is about 11,000 km and takes about 12 hours, appears as a curve on the flat map. It seems like an unnecessarily long distance. If the Earth was flat, the flight path between Washington and Tokyo would be straight. On the Flat Earth map, it would be the flight path from Santiago, Chile to Sydney, Australia. It would be an over 20,000 km long flight path and an airplane would need more than 24 hours to cover it. But in reality, a plane takes only 14 hours from Santiago to Sydney by using this route. It is only possible in the globe model. It just goes to show how important it is to understand the true shape of our planet when it comes to things like air travel. Modern navigation systems like GPS rely on Earth's longitude and latitude lines to express any point on a map. These lines cannot be accurately represented on a flat Earth map. This is because from the equator lines of longitude diverge further as you move towards the edge making it difficult to use polar coordinates to represent a point in the southern hemisphere. In this sense, the GPS would have been ineffective in that region. But GPS systems based on the coordinates of the globe model work all around the world. Additionally, in the Flat Earth model, geographic directions, north, south, east, and west are not defined. It further complicates the navigation.
Artificial satellites are also hoax for flat earthers, because they can't adjust the satellites in the flat earth model. For them, satellites are devices that float in the air through balloons like the weather balloons. Weather balloons are also used for certain atmospheric observations. However, they are not a practical replacement for satellites due to their limited altitude, short lifespan, limited coverage, security issue, sustainability, and cost compared to satellites. The weather balloons are much bigger and have a maximum altitude of only 20 to 40 kilometers. If the satellites were floating in the air through balloons, we might be able to see them with our naked eyes. Flat earthers argue that the sun and moon move above the earth in circular paths. If the sun moves at a constant speed, it makes a huge difference in day and night duration. Because on the flat earth model, the circumference of the Tropic Capricorn is much greater than the Tropic of Cancer. The sun would need more time to go around in December than in June. In short, time, which we all depend on, can't be explained in a flat earth model. According to the flat earth model, the earth has only one pole, the North Pole. The South Pole doesn't exist. Flat earthers can't explain the existence of magnetic field lines in the absence of the second pole. The compass would not work in the absence of the second pole. A compass on a flat earth would not have a consistent reference point for determining direction. Some people also don't believe in the globe because they think it is against their religion. They also don't believe in the evolution, space, and Big Bang theory. Science is not the domain of any specific country or group. It is an open field for everyone. Thanks to advancements in science, humans have progressed in every field and become familiar with new things. After learning about the parts and working way of a vehicle or aircraft, we cannot deny its manufacturer. Believing in the Big Bang, evolution, the globe, and other things doesn't mean that there is no creator. Science still cannot explain many things. No matter how much progress we make in science, it cannot prove that there is no creator or God. If there is a land beyond the Antarctica, there would be wars among the countries to seize its resources. If a specific country or bloc had occupied that land, other countries would not have been silent spectators. Why Flat Earth Theory Still Exists The Flat Earth Model can't be justified at any angle. It doesn't make any sense at all. The reason why the Flat Earth Theory still exists even in the modern world. The answer is massive propaganda on social media. Some people promote the Flat Earth Model on social media to increase their likes and followers. Weird things and conspiracy theories go viral very quickly on social media. People who believe in conspiracy theories start to believe in the flat earth model.